In today's video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can procedurally texture your PS1 models inside of Blender. Let's hop in right now. All right, so this is the scene that I'm working with. You can see that a lot of this stuff is actually all done procedurally, like this wall texture. All of this is done uh, through procedural texture, and yeah, I think it ends up looking pretty cool. So let's hop in and show you exactly how these were done. Now, just bear in mind before I show you these, I have a problem where I do my own setups way too complex and spend a bunch of time with them for no reason. So I'll show you what exactly what I mean by that. So if I just go select this wall piece over here, so you can just go check this out and check the whole node setup. This is the whole node setup. And uh, basically I just kind of overcomplicate this for no reason. Uh, but yeah, let me break down exactly what all of this is doing. Obviously, we have this texture right here. Now, the first thing we have to do to actually get it pixelated, because if I got rid of this, uh, I think it would be slightly different scaling. But you'll see here, this is what it would look like. And the, the reason that is, so you see here, we have a texture coordinate, a mapping node, and we have this like snap divide value. OK, so what you have to do to get these set up is you have to go vector math. Cool. And you see here, so we can add like that. So change this over to a snap right there. And then obviously you can plug this into the top uh, like value. Then we go math node like that, change this to the divide, plug that into the bottom. And then we go add a value. You never need to add a value, obviously it plugs in there. But there and change this top value to one. Okay. And then this obviously can be plugged in. So there. And then as you bring this value up, you'll see it adds more and more pixels. So this is a quick way of instantly turning anything into a pixelated texture. You can do this with any sort of procedural texture, image texture. So you'll see inside of the scene, these images literally just imported them from online. And then I have the same node setup and I can just go and change the pixel amounts whenever I want. Yeah, so it's really cool and really useful for everything. Cool. And I'm pretty similar with all of these. Basically what I do is for me, I want to kind of mix in the amount of detail. So what I go do is mix two noise textures together. So you see, I have this top noise texture and this bottom noise texture. So this is kind of like the general waves of noise kind of thing. And then the top one is more concentrated in its actual kind of each pixel is kind of different. So here I take this bottom one. Uh, by the way, I'm using control shift and left click to preview the texture. You see here, I'm basically just clamping it down. So a bit like some parts a bit darker and you'll see it'd be basically the same thing like over here. If I select this wall, same thing like there, we clamp it down uh, and then basically I've got this noise and then uh, I'm mixing between them. So this, if I go plug this in here, so basically we currently are mixing between, I guess, yeah, green and then we got red. So you see here, yeah, this is what we're mixing between right now. And so what we can do is we can plug in a value. So let's see what this goes to. Uh, yeah, so we want the other option. So like that, so you see, so now, this noise texture right here is getting plugged into B. Um, and then what we can do is I have a brightness and contrast thing. So that goes and darkens the whole thing. So you see, it looks like this. And I can plug that into A. And then what happens from that is because it's mixed together uh, in those darker bits, we get, uh, so like the dark bits of this, we get this value. And then the light bits, we get this value. Yeah. And then from there, I think this, we plug into a noise ramp. Basically, this is so we get the base kind of pattern. And then here, let's actually get the color for it. Um, I basically just went and added like two values and then just a slight extra one. So you see if it wasn't there, it would kind of just fade off. But then we just have that extra tiny little bit of that darker color. Okay. And then I think I basically just plug that into base color and then just clamp it even further to plug it into the roughness. So without that, it would kind of just be a straight like roughness value like that. But yeah, so now we just have some variation in the roughness. And that's basically the same for here. You see basically same thing we mix it together. Then we add the actual color and I just basically add some like brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, value, all of that. So you'll see like on these uh, like boxes, same thing, exactly same setup. And then I just had the color afterwards uh, and then I just add a hue, have saturation, value. Um, I go and add a object info with a random. So you see here that each one, each box has a slightly different like value on it. And then that gets multiplied on top of it with this gray. So let me just turn off my viewport compositing is messing around the colors a lot but you see as i change this it kind of darkens it up so you can just add that so it's like each box would be kind of a slightly different thing you could obviously do the exact same thing with like a hue um and all of that but yeah that's kind of what i did and then mix it all together and there we go we got a cool set of boxes strewn around the floor but as i said basically the same so noise texture like that 
and then I have this noise getting mixed together, plugged into the color, use saturation value, and then plugged in. Yeah, and that's basically how I do my procedural textures inside of Blender. I hope you found this useful. If you want, you can go check out my PS1 course link down below. If you want to learn how to make some cool low poly characters inside of Blender, then click this video over here to watch that now. See you.